Shalom. This week's Sedra is Sedra Shemini. In this week's Torah portion, we are introduced to the myth of Kashrut, including the prohibition of eating insects. I am the Lord. I am your God. You shall sanctify yourselves and be sanctified, for I am sanctified. You shall not make yourselves tame through any swarming thing that moves upon the earth, for I, the Lord, am the one who brought you up from the land of Egypt to be your God. You shall act in a sanctified manner, for I am sanctified. The word up and the phrase who brought you up from the land of Egypt is strange and from this week's Sedra. We usually find that God described B'nai Israel as going out from the land of Egypt, not up from the land of Egypt. Why did God describe B'nai Israel as going up from Egypt and not out from Egypt? Why is the change specifically made when talking about eating non-kosher insects? In his commentary on the phrase, who brought you up from the land of Egypt, Rashi offered two explanations. The first explanation that Rashi offered was that God brought you up on condition that you should accept my commandments. The second explanation comes from a teaching that was taught in the school of Rabbi Ishmael. If God had brought the Jewish people up from Egypt only to effect this one thing, that they do not defile themselves by eating insects as other people of the world eat insects all the time, that would be sufficient reason for them to have been brought up from Egypt. And it should be regarded by them as an elevation for themselves. And that's what's implied by the expression used, I have raised you up, meaning above the people of the land of Egypt. In his work, the Mishnah Torah, the Rambam divided the entire body of Halacha into 14 different volumes. One of the volumes is titled Kedusha, meaning sanctity. It includes the laws of forbidden sexual relationships, forbidden fruits, and the laws of slaughtering animals. In his description of this volume, the Rambam wrote, I will include within it all of the mitzvot that involve forbidden intimate relations and those that involve forbidden foods. I have grouped the two, forbidden intimate relations and forbidden foods together because it is in these two manners that God has sanctified us and separated us from the other nations. Later, at the conclusion of the laws of forbidden foods, Maimonides wrote, whoever is careful, careful concerning these matters brings an additional so measure of sanctity and purity to his soul and purges his soul for the sake of the God. As it is written in Vayikra, and you shall sanctify yourselves and you will be sanctified for I am sanctified. The Jews' exodus from Egypt wasn't just an emancipating seminal moment in their nationhood. It was a transformative moment where they went from just one nation among all the other nations to God's chosen nation. As just one of the other nations, they weren't set aside for any meaningful purpose, but as God's chosen people, they became sanctified. They were expected to raise themselves up in a more meaningful lifestyle. They were given the Torah with its 613 mitzvot and told to follow it and become sanctified. Shabbat Shalom. The two sets of laws that most sanctify the Jews are the laws concerning sexual relations and eating. These laws channel our base instincts and sanctify the Jews more than any other laws. It is specifically when discussing them that God writes that he brought the Jewish people up from Egypt. God wasn't referring to the direction the Jews traveled, but the transformation that they were making.